Here we go! Hello everyone, it's me, Savvy. Welcome back to another Kirby Celebration video, and also, welcome back to Macaron, the bite size reviews for your enjoyment. It's been a hot minute since I've done one of these, so I said, why not, and started thinking about what game I should review. At the time of thinking, I was playing around with my DS, and found this game called the Kirby Superstar Ultra. As a fan of the series myself, I decided that I had to try this game that everybody was gushing about. The more I played the game, the more I realized that the game that needed a Macron episode was in front of my very own eyes. Kirby Superstar Ultra is a remake of the critically acclaimed Nintendo game Hoshino Kabi Supa Deraksu, or as most of you know it, Kirby Superstar, or well, there's also Europe that calls it Kirby's Fun Pack, but th that's not important. The game was the turning point in the series, introducing stable elements as multiple moves for copy ability, the different hats that Kirby gets when selling certain enemies, and it's also one of the few games where the multiple games within the package are the product's main selling point. Europe wasn't lying when they told us that this was going to be a fun pack. Nine games are here for our pleasure, all with different stories and tasks. With that being said, all the games within aren't actually full-fledged games, more so small, bite-sized experiences for the player. Now, in 2008, the game was remade for the Nintendo DS, under the title Kirby Superstar Ultra. Before starting the game itself, let's take a look at the instructional manual. Yeah, remember these? Taking a look inside will show us that the game takes the same Games Omnibus approach as the original. Well, well I don't know what a Games Omnibus is, yet I think it's the selection of games. Booning up the game and BAM, we get this wonderful cutscene where we see Kirby flying with his warp star in the galaxy. I love how Kirby goes back and forth between the two screens and looks around and smiles at the camera. It's a very nice way to set the tone for this game. Let's hop into the first mode of the game, Spring Breeze. King DDD has stolen all the food of Planet Popstar, and now it's up to you, Kirby, to defeat and ruin his mischievous plan. The plot isn't anything too in depth, and honestly, it's not a bad thing at all. Spring Breeze, as the title implies, is a pretty easy experience. You'll go through four wards and challenge the boss that waits at the end of each level. The mode can be completed in roughly 10 minutes. This is a pretty nice way to get into the swing of things and understand how Kirby feels and plays. You know this game is being able to poop out blue spheres that can make your current ability become an ally. That's cute. Copy abilities, as I mentioned before, now have different moves depending on the direction you're pressing while doing your move. In a way, it really feels like Smash Bros, but the similarities don't stop there. You can shield with the shoulder buttons and one of the bosses is a floating hand. Getting back to Spring Breeze, it's actually a remake of the original Kirby's Dream Man for the Game Boy, but it's strangely missing Kabula, the giant Zapli shoot 'em up boss from the original. Oh well, that's a shame. Also, can we take a second to appreciate the skin graphics? The original art direction was good, don't get me wrong, but this remake gets everything right and makes everything so much better. The game uses a lot of assets from Nightmare in Dreamland, so everything looks more fresh and new. Beating DD and using the power of the stars, Kirby will inflate, becoming a giant balloon, and give back all the food to everybody in Popstar. Next up is Dinoblade, a nice platforming adventure where Kirby has to defeat a bird named Dinoblade for some reason. Ah shit, let's, let's check the manual again. Set out on an epic journey to stop the giant monstrous bird, Dinoblade, from destroying all of the crops. Sure, okay. You'll go through five colorful levels with all adorable names. Peanut Plains, Coca Cave, Candy Mountain, Ah, oh, that's very cute. The levels are your standard Kirby stuff, puzzles, bosses and all. There's very great music and the final boss, the previously mentioned bird, it's just amazing. After defeating Dinoblade, Kirby finds her chicks, and he takes care of them and teaches them how to fly. Ah, that's wholesome. The mother comes back and gives Kirby a last goodbye. Let's move on to something more interesting, to say the least. Kirby is chilling and wandering around with a cute explorer hat. He is so careless, in fact, that he walks and falls into a hole. <laughs> The goal of this game is to find the exit to this cave while finding all kinds of treasure. Most of these treasures are really normal stuff, metals, statues, etc. But there's also some other stuff, like the Triforce. 
It's really fun exploring this huge area and trying to find all the treasure chests. Although linear, this game feels a lot like a metroidvania. The bosses are the best of the best. A huge whale attacks from the background, a chameleon that changes color every time you fight him, and a freaking turn-based RPG. This is one of my favorite bosses. Some copy abilities will appear on the side of the stages, giving the player a choice to remain with the current ability or quickly choose another one that can make the fight easier or harder. At the end, there's also some stats that do absolutely nothing. I love this series. You'll then travel a little longer and you'll be greeted by Wham Bam Rock, a boss that is basically Master Hand. Kirby will beat him and fly with a Swarp Star with all of his treasure. Moving on to something more different, we have Gourmet Race, a fun and simple racing game. The story goes something like this, Kirby is thinking about food, he climbs a mountain, and DDD is there to greet him, eating some food. Now you have to race him to see who can eat the most. Run across three different stages as you try to collect the most food and outrun King DDD. The bottom screen shows a nifty little bar that displays where the two players are. Speaking of two players, this game actually supports multiplayer. Nice. I couldn't try it sadly, yet I'm sure it's fun. Next up we have Revenge of Meta Knight. Meta Knight and his crew are ready to rule Dreamland, as Meta Knight thinks that the planet is just too lazy? Sure. So it's up to Kirby to stop this madness and destroy the Halberd. Something that I really love about this mode is just how cool it is. You have the time limit, unique and charming dialogues between the characters of the ship that make everything more alive, and the music, oh my god. This song right here won a Grammy. After blasting Kirby off of the ship and sending him to an unknown island, Kirby will have to defeat Wispy Woods and Twin Woods during sunset. That is so pretty. Explore some more and you'll find Dynablade waiting for you. You'll take a ride on her and get back into the halberd. You go against the worst fucking boss of all time, and after a little bit more exploring, running, finding a giant golden mecha lobster, making your way into the ducks, fighting the reactor, freeing some wheelies, trust me, it's important in the plot, you'll see this pretty touching dialogue between Meta Knight and its crew, ending with him apologizing for what they are about to see. Defeat some enemy hordes and hand up this door. This is the end, Kirby. Come meet your doom. Grab the sword on the ground and be ready for an epic showdown. I don't care that this is the same scenario as Kirby's adventure, it's just that good of a moment. After beating him, the ship is about to explode. Quickly get a wheelie that has escaped before, see, I told you it was important. And after this tense escape sequence, where Meta Knight furiously chases you, you jump out of the ship that is now falling into the sea and have the most majestic end credits I've ever seen. This is actually inspired by Lupin the Third Sending. Man, nothing could really beat this mode. What? Milky Way Wishes is here and the Sun and Moon are fighting. Why? I don't know, it's the third time we've seen this shit. This guy called Marx tell us that there is a way to stop them, and that is by asking Nova, a giant comet that can grant any wish. But to awaken Nova, Kirby will need the power of the stars from all the galaxy, so Kirby hops into the warp star and flies to the galaxy. In this mode, everything will be slightly different, you can no longer get powers by inhaling enemies, you have to get them from Copy Essence's Deluxe, which are some orb-like things that make you learn an ability that you'll be able to access no matter when. That also come with some exceptions. As the abilities crash, Mike, Sleep, Cook, and paint will be able to be obtained just as normal. Speaking of abilities, they are all fantastic. Here are some of the new ones. Slam enemies and fly with jet. Make duplicates of yourself and create deflecting barriers with mirror. Become a stealth master and confuse your enemies with ninja. Splatter your enemies with a huge color splash with paint. Shock your enemies by firing sparks and store energy of electricity with plasma. Use your yo-yo skills with yo-yo, and there's also Cook. The levels in this mode are amazing. Planet Floria has magical doors that let you switch between the seasons to influence the stage layout. Planet Skya is a cloud level with some puzzles. Planet Cavius is a mini boss rush inside a cavern, and there's also... Eh. Which is a planet where you can obtain the copy ability... Copy. The levels are very well designed and can all be feel rewarding to explore and complete and the fact that you can switch to any ability you want in the fly makes this mode stand out as the most unique of the bunch. At the end of the adventure, with all the stars collected, Kirby will be able to summon Nova, but right when Kirby is about to bring peace to the pop star, Marks of all people shows up 
and wishes to become the ruler of the planet, becoming a demonic creature. Well, that was certainly unexpected. With the power of the stars, Kirby hops on a starship while Comet Nova is slowly approaching Popstar to fuse with it, so that can give Mark's ultimate power. The Sun and Moon team up to stop the comet while Kirby gets into the core of Nova with this awesome shmup section. You then get to the nucleus itself and you destroy the main things of Nova's art while dodging these columns. Now, with a serious injury, Nova will stop and Kirby flies back to the galaxy and starts the fight with now seemingly unstoppable Marks. And wow, everything about this fight is perfect. The music, the pattern, the sheer eeriness of this creature that is far from anything you have ever seen in the past. And this song, holy shit, it's so good. Take a listen! Marx is finally beaten, and his corpse now crushes into Nova's wound, and Nova explodes, with now the sun and moon at peace, and Kirby gets finally some sleep. The credits roll, and this would technically be the end of the game if we take a look at the original, yet this game says at the end that there's more. So we get tossed back in the select menu and who boy we have some more things to play. The game clearly can't stop giving me stuff and I'm so happy. But first, let's look at the sub games you play. Well, technically all of the games are sub games, but yeah, it's the ones that aren't platforming adventures. First of all, we have Kirby Card Swipe. The goal here is to have fast reflexes and click on the card when it shows on the upper screen. The game gets harder and harder as it goes, and the illustration also features some characters from older Kirby games, like the Animal Bodies, Nightmare, and even Drossia from the Touch games. Up next is Kirby on the Draw, where you have to shoot the targets and avoid the bombs, and you'll also have to be careful as you can run out of ammo. Very straightforward, but fun. And last, but certainly not least, comes my favorite one of all the new ones, Snack Tracks. For Kirby's, keep their mouth open, as tons of food comes from these tracks, but be careful, some pesky capillaries and bombs can ruin Kirby's lunch, so it's up to you to throw them into the near tracks where other Kirby's are also eating. So it's going to be a game of hot potato, where the game becomes stressing and very fast. It's my personal favorite as it gets very tense and chaotic, but as bonuses we also have nostalgic minigames, from the original Kirby Superstar. Samurai Kirby is also all about reflexes, and you have to unleash your weapon right when you see the two question marks. You also have to think really fast as being too quick may lead you to a death. The other nostalgic subgame is Megadon Punch, a classic. Screw snack tracks, this is the best one. You need to carefully push the button at the right time to destroy the whole planet. Holy cannoli! Let's go to something more serious now, Revenge of the King, a harder version of Spring Breeze. The game starts with this cutscene of King Dedede and all of the Waddle Dees in Dedede's palace. The camera then- wait, 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 wait. Play that again? Is that Kabula? Whoa! We then go to Purple Plants, which in my opinion looks a lot nicer than Green Greens. And we also have some new enemy designs, like this new mushroom thingy. These roses look very cute. And these fat ass tires, they're amazing. The mode is more difficult than the original, yet it ain't no Dark Souls. The game is still pretty easy, yet it never feels like it's too easy. Yet difficulty isn't the only thing that is different between this and the original Spring Reese. We have added level portions, new enemy designs as just said, and revenge bosses. Harder version of the original with added attacks. Like here, Wispy's revenge can now shoot tornadoes and some bad apples can fall. Illusion Islands is practically the same, yet it's so much better looking in my opinion. Oh, do I like these new Scarfies a lot. After falling a million times for Scarfie's trick, it was very surprising seeing something that could make me feel the same way I felt when I first encountered these as a kid. Lolo and Lola now are orange and purple, and some obstacles could pop out without being pushed by either Lolo or Lalala. Crash Cloud is up next, and aw, these cutscenes are so cute. The level does introduce us to a harder Krakow and Krakow Jr., which are now stormy clouds. 
Now we go to Mount Dedede and here's the little fucker Kabula's back! The starship from Milky Way Wishes rescues Kirby right when he's about to fall down and now we have a tense fight against Kabula. Finally, Mount Dedede is very different from the original mode. Now it's a full level and like Revenge of Mount Knight, there's some dialogue between King Dedede and Bandana Waddle Dee. This was his very first important appearance, while in the original he was just a simple opponent during Megaton Punch. This is actually very wholesome as the two seem to have a pretty strong connection. So much so that Bandana D willingly goes to the, into the battlefield and tries to stop Kirby. Although he fails immediately, it's cute that he tried. Dedede, now furious, offers Kirby a hammer and tells him, Our grudge will be settled at last. Holy shit. This game has so many good quotes. Dedede will put his mask on and he will this brand new Dedede hammer. All of this happening in an electrified cage, a bopping theme, an epic boss fight, and a great mode overall. This mode reminds me a lot of Meta Knight's Revenge, down right to the credits, that Shao Dedede shamefully walks away with his army of Waddle Dees that try to cheer him up. How cute. Were you getting emotional? Too bad! Know my power! BAM! It's Meta Knight Ultra! A mode where you can play as the knight himself and speed through all the game modes. And when I say you can speed through it, I mean you can beat it in just one hour. Cool! Meta Knight has a bunch of cool skills, such as becoming faster, heal himself, call his knights for help, and creating a giant tornado. All of these moves can be done by defeating enemies that give you blue blobs. The more blue blobs, the more things you can do. Yada yada yada, be badass, yada yada yada, defeat everybody, destroy even your own ship, and BAM, you reach Nova. The Sun and Moon aren't fighting, so his only wish is to fight the strongest warrior in the entire universe. Someone so strong that they were sealed away. And I just have to say, boss fights are this game's strongest points. They are all unique and amazing, all of them accompanied by some kick-ass music that make everything all the more hype. Galactonite, the strongest warrior in the galaxy, ain't no exception. Just the design of this guy, like, look at him! I thought it was impossible to make Mennonite look more badass. Yet, would you look at that? Majestic wings, horns, and a dope shield. You kill this guy, and Mennonite returns to his summon cliff where he can think about life. Now to the arena, a simple boss rush. You get all the abilities at the start and can also poop out a body. The order of the fights is randomized, and so that makes for some cool variety. At the end of every fight you get the chance of healing yourself and choose another ability. This mode is very good as I said, as all the bosses are creative and fun. But I don't really have anything else to say, that is about this version of the arena. As a reward for being the arena, you get helper to hero. Dreamland needs a hero, and you may just be the one. You can choose from a plethora of helpers, all of them with different abilities. I've always loved this screen. It looks like a fighting game with only helpers. That would be so cool. Some characters, like Tak, have changed moves so they can actually be playable characters. There's also two sword helpers, yet they have slightly different moves. The adventure is now a fixed path, ending with Wham Bam Rock. Okay, pretty simple, 1, 2, 3 is gone. Easy win, wait. That's right, he has a second phase. Wham Bam Jewel, better and now with a third eye. And now, the final battle. The true arena gives us 10 of the hardest fights in game. All the revenge bosses from Revenge of the King, Wham Bam Jewel, Galactonite, and the true final boss of the game, Mark Saul. After crashing with Nova, Mark gets fused with the remaining parts of the comet, becoming a stronger, even more creepy version of himself. We are now at incident RGB keyboard, and Marx is stronger than heaven. Stronger than heaven is like... <laughs> okay, I, I'm just a little bit too obsessed with Judge, I don't know. We are now inside an RGB keyboard, and Marx is stronger than ever. He can become paint, spit a giant laser, and more. This is the most tough fight in the game, and Marx will let us know that he is not happy about his defeat, screaming at the top of his lungs, shattering and disappearing for good. Kirby Super Soul Ultra is what every remake should strive to be. A bigger, better version of the original without sacrificing anything. Instead of replacing the game adds and polishes every aspect where the game failed. The game is jam-packed with content and it gives the player just enough to keep them satisfied for a long time. And this game also has multiplayer, which I sadly couldn't try. The game is sadly a little bit too easy at times, yet it never feels like it's giving you an easy win. 
Kirby Superstar Ultra doesn't only give you plenty of platforming modes, it also enough variety to make the game never seem repetitive. And games like these often get stale, but Kirby thankfully avoids this. With a lot of personality, music, cute cutscenes, and ton of replayability, make this game the perfect Kirby starter pack. Although this game is not perfect, it really is one of the best Kirby games ever made. I give Kirby Superstar Ultra a 9.5 out of 10. If you have your DS or 3DS somewhere, give this game a shot, and let me know down below if you have the nostalgia for this game, or if you're like me, you just try it out and immediately fell in love with it. Next time on the show, we're going to check out the other Kirby platformer for Nintendo DS, Kirby Squeak Squad. See you then, goodbye.